Have you ever wanted to play the barbarian like the TV show Vikings where you battle cry and charge in with absolute rage and nothing can seem to kill you? Do you enjoy being that guy that everyone wants to invite to your party because you're usually the last one standing who can resurrect the rest of your team? Today we got something special for you. I'm going to guide you through the Thorns build for Barbarian in Diablo 4 Season 2. The Barbarian is an aggressive, rugged, and raw damage dealer, and this build further enhances that reputation. So buckle up as we're about to reveal the key to this build. It's all about damage boost and reduction to close enemies. If you're new here, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you won't miss our future Diablo 4 content. So let's start with the basics. The Thorns build, as the name suggests, revolves around the concept of reflecting damage back at your enemies. But that's not all. It also provides a significant damage boost, making you an unstoppable force on the battlefield. To maximize this build, you'll prioritize Frenzy for dual wielding, Steel Grass to grab distant enemies and pull them to you, and Wrath of the Berserker to instantly fire off Unstoppable and other boons. These skills not only boost your damage output, but reduce the damage taken from nearby enemies, making your Barbarian extremely durable and deadly at close quarters. Keep it aggressive. You want to be in the thick of the fight, taking hits and dishing out even more damage. Use your mobility to close the distance fast and your durability to stay in the fight. So without any further ado, let's jump into the details of the build. First of all, on the helm, we need the Numbing Wrath, and that's imprinted. The aspect you want to focus on is the Numbing Wrath and try to maximize it. Always in gems, you want to put the Health Gem, the Rubies. Moving on, Razor Plate is probably the best armor, adds a Thorns. You could also put a defensive piece on here as well. Inner Column helps you, you know, you can do several things on it. I like Intercom because it deals increased damage when you stand still. So disobedience on your leggings. You want something that has total armor. The percentage of total armor is really critical because armor allows you to be more tanky. Ghost Walker, you definitely want to be running that. Max it out if you can, because you're gonna be unstoppable quite a bit. Moving right along to the Needle Flare. And we put this on the hammer, even though we're not really using a hammer. Uh, because it increases our Thorns damage to 80%. Dealing damages to enemies around you. And because we're running a Thorns build, it's going to help. Moving on to Ramaldani's Magnum Opus. This is probably the best weapon for this build. Uh, we're going to maybe have a separate guide that talks about how to go farm this, where you go do it. But basically, this is increasing overall damage on dual wheel weapons and close enemies. You always want to focus on damage to close enemies and resistance to close enemies in this build. Bearded Axe of Burning Rage. I love Burning Rage. If you can max that out, that's the best thing you can do. It's a lot of fun. Also, it has like this f sort of flame aspect to it. Put that on the other dual wield. I love Ancient's Oath. This is a really, really great two-handed axe. I'm going to make another video that shows you how you can actually do a hybrid build with this in aside from the, uh, the standard build of the Thorns. On the Amulets, Battle Trance is a must. You definitely want to get that. Bold Chieftains on one ring. It's really important because that has resistance, a fire resistance. Damage to close enemies is really, again, the, the overall theme of this build is damage to close enemies, resistance to damage from close enemies that allows you to stay tanky. And uh, as they hit you, you also heal. And your thorns does way more damage than your weapons. Uh, Death Wish Loop increases damage while berserking. Damage to stunned enemies is a really, really good one as well. So that's the armor on this build. Start off with a basic skill tree. Now, what I do is put a point into Lunging Strike. And there's a reason for that. Because you could actually want to level up your access to the top level. The main thing is Frenzy. And you can see that anything that adds Frenzy is going to be good.
over here, we basically skip that entire tree for the time being, move over to Rallying Cry, Imposing Presence, Martial Vigor, max that out. Martial Vigor adds damage reduction against elites, and this adds maximum life. Enhanced Rallying Cry makes you unstoppable. This is really, really important because as you become unstoppable, nothing can kill you. It's really, really cool. Always begin approaching an enemy with unstoppable, and then you can increase the duration of unstoppable with your items. It's a synergy that works. Also use the Strategic Rallying Cry. That adds 10% life as Fortify. It's really useful. So Tough as Nails is going to match that out. Challenging Shout, we use that all the time. Once you finished it, we do the War Cry and the Enhanced War Cry. We want to add Booming Voice and Guternal Yell, as well as Raid Leader. So Steel Grasp is going to be your primary attack. Thick Skin, you only need one point in here, but you want to put three points into Counter Offensive and three points into Defensive Stance. Wrath of the Berserker is our primary berserking and adds more Unstoppable Duration. Uh, the only downside is it takes about a minute to cool down. But you can try to reduce that with armor and gear. And then finally, we're going to go over to con Unconstrained. Unconstrained is really the best key passive for this build. The Berserking maximum duration by 5 seconds increase its damage bonus to 60%. That's huge. So moving over to the Paragon Tree... Just going to focus on what you want to equip in each one. You can see the description below. Glyph Socket. While Berserking, you take 10% reduced damage from Elites. And 73.9% damage while Berserking. That's huge. So as you're Berserking, you're going to be almost doubling your damage. It's, it's, it's huge. And so since you're taking reduced damage from Elites, you can take on bosses much easier. Uh, the next Glyph Socket we want to max out is Territorial. This adds 57.4% damage to close enemies. Remember, this build is all about being close to enemies and maxing out your damage to them. You also gain 10% damage reduction against close enemies. Moving over to the next Paragon Tree, 18% damage while Berserking. That's Ambidextrous. The next Glyph Socket you want to focus on is Martial. And then finally, we're going to do Undaunted. 64.5% damage while fortified. So now that we've covered the Paragon Tree, let's move over to Expertise. This is very critical because you're going to be mainly working on one-handed sword and one-handed axe in the dual wield. On the Technique, you want to use the two-handed axe Expertise because it adds some additional buffs. And it's really the best one, even though you'll be attacking with one-handed weapons, one axe, one sword. You want to max that two-handed axe expertise to 10. And the way to do that is by actually playing a whirlwind barbarian for a while. That's going to really, really level you up quickly. We're going to have a separate build guide on that, how to do a hybrid build between the whirlwind barbarian and the thorns. I call it the thorns whirlwind barbarian. So let's move on to the vampiric Powers, Prey on the Weak, Increase Damage to Vulnerable Enemies. Since your shout make them vulnerable, that's going to increase your damage. Metamorphosis is really key because you're going to evade. And this is, this is a really, really fun thing to do. You can literally just jump through people and turn into rose petals. Hemomancy. Your attacks deal 80% of your maximum life as physical damage to nearby en enemies. That's huge. And this effect can occur once every four seconds. So you want to pump that as much as you can. Ravenous 
up to a 20% damage to increase your attack speed by 40%, total movement speed for six seconds. Love Ravenous. It's a fantastic power. Moonrise. Hitting an enemy with basic skill grants you 4% attack speed for 10 seconds, stacking up to five times. Upon reaching maximum stacks, you enter Vampiric Blood Rage. And this Blood Rage gives you 160% basic skill damage. It's huge, and you're going to see that Moonrise pop a lot as we do the gameplay. Well, that's it for our Diablo 4 Season Barbarian Thorns build guide. Remember, the key to this build is boosting your damage, reducing the damage taken from close enemies. If you found this guide helpful, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe for more Diablo 4 content. I'm Vic, Mr. Hatman. Peace out.